Hello, John. How are you doing? Hi, Natasha. I'm fine. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Now, I, I, I'm very excited to speak to you as the captain of extremely successful seniors teams this year. You've captained both the over 50s for the World Championships and the over 50s for the European Championships. And you've managed to bring home gold medals for both. You must be the most successful captain <laughs> in the whole world. Uh, how, how, how was it? Um, yeah, pretty good. <laughs> um, <laughs> to put it, uh, yeah. yes, it was, uh, it was amazing actually. Um, I mean, we, I've been, I've been to a couple of, of these events before. I went to one in 2018 and also one in 2019 and they were the world senior team championships and, um, yeah, they're in fantastic tournaments to play in, and I was captain on both of those occasions. And, uh, in 2018, we, we got really close. We, yeah. I think, we got the silver medal. Who was in the team that time? In the team in, that, in 2018, it was um, John Spielman and Jim Plaskett and Keith Arkell yeah. and uh, Mark Hebden, and uh, we we basically um, we won all of our games apart from one draw, and then we lost the final round against Germany. And had we won that, we'd have won it ahead of. Yeah. US. It was incredibly close. And, yeah. But still, really good, really fantastic experience. Anyway, I mean, as yeah. you know, you've been to some. some oh, of, that's great yeah. fun! Yeah. So, um, you know, um, but this time, of course, we in the in the world's uh, senior champion, world senior team championship in in mm. June in Italy. Mm. We we clearly we had we had we had our best team ever because we obviously got um, um, both Mickey Adams, who was like debuting. He hadn't mm. played before. He was our he was the youth. He was our young guy. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, we, yes. also, we also had Nigel Short as well. So we had a really strong team. And we also had Keith Arkell and Mark Hebden as well. Yes. And, um, and you, and, you're good. And me. Yeah. And um, so that, that is quite some team. Mickey, was, Nigel, yeah. Keith and Hebs mm. and John. That is that's uh, that's pretty formidable. And, um, and we were top seeds, weren't we? We were the top seeds. But there are other strong yeah. teams in it. Yeah. Well, the team that's kind of dominated the World Senior Team Championship for the last three or four occasions is the USA. Mm. And they still had an immensely strong team. I think we were top seeds just by a yeah. few rating points. Oh, right. It was very close. Um, yes. It was pretty close. I mean, just to put, just to give you some idea how strong they were, or was they had Jan Elvest on wow. board four. On board four. And he, I think, he was like at one stage he was like at his peak he's like the world number four or five yeah um wow. you know yeah so they had a really strong team um and we kind of knew it'd probably be, be between the two of us yeah um although there were some other really strong teams as well i mean italy the actual hosts yeah. they were I think they were the fifth seeds but they just seemed really strong and also they had a team that were i think all their players were really active yeah. Um, and yeah. Uh, they they did really well as well. Um, but it did. It, it, we played. I think we played the USA in about round four, and we drew that match. And then it, both of us just kept winning, <laughs> and we we finally managed to shake them off just in the penultimate round, basically. Yeah. I remember, and uh, and and it was all sort of very exciting. There, there were like people disappearing for COVID. Oh, as well. yeah. Like, it wasn't one of the teams that played. US, they were they were a, a person down. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because obviously quite a few people were were suffering, um, and um, especially towards the end of the event. And um, mm. USA did play. They played a match against Hungary in the in the penultimate round, and Hungary defaulted on board one. Um, yes. But actually, Hungary still managed to draw the match. Yeah, yeah, match yeah. Draw, which right, actually yeah. obviously more or less put us in pole position going to the final round. Mm. So it all um, came down to the final round. That was that was a very exciting day, that one. Mm, it was. We were basically playing Canada and we needed a two all draw. Um mm. and um the lineup was Mickey and Nigel and Mark and myself playing that final round. Yeah. And obviously, we just completely outrated Canada. I mean, you know, they were a strong, very solid team. and um, But we were obviously clear favourites to win the match. And uh, also, Mickey sort of won on by default. 
on board mm-hmm. one because they're uh, uh, David Cummings uh, was showing, I think he had symptoms of COVID, so wasn't able oh, to play. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're talking about it, it's like it would be if, if the whole tournament was like, <laughs> it wasn't, it was, it was just a, there were a few it was a little, bit, right? yeah. was a little bit of a round, but yeah, sure. Um, but there weren't, there were only, a, there were only a few defaults basically in the entire tournament, basically. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, and yeah, so we were one nil up already. And um, I, kind of we just it just everything in our favor all the odds in our favor but still like you get to that situation right in the final round like it just seems yeah. nerve-wracking you know because yeah. because things yeah. can go wrong i mean um i basically decided to um take a quick draw because i just felt like just to get as, so close to that two points to become world champions i thought yeah. we'll get to one and a half basically and then no, and then nigel yeah. and uh, mark were both playing yeah. And I uh, thought we just need a half point out of those two. I mean, yeah. the chances are we'll win both, but we just need half. But it's crazy. They were based still nerve wracking games. I mean, basically, Nigel played a really great game, but the yeah. one moment he did kind of get his knight trapped. <laughs> like it's all on you're purpose. Captain, you're like, it's oh, all on purpose, no. basically. But he kind of, as a, as a captain, it was kind of nerve wracking, basically. Yeah, because yeah. he would have to sacrifice this knight. Would yeah. you'd much prefer a nice sort of smooth positional game, and um. <laughs> And Mark just won a pawn, but Fine. even his but his opponent somehow got this all this compensation just oh, all this by no. accident. So just at one stage, it just seemed nerve wracking. Um, yeah. And um, I went back to the taunt hall. I went back. Yeah. I decided, I went back to the hotel because it wasn't very far. And then I went back to the taunt hall and um, just watched Nigel game. And eventually, he kind of. Um, he would it, it became more and more obvious that he had it all under control well i'm sure he did have it under control but it became more and more obvious to the spectators that he was he was going to win his game so when he finally did it was like uh yeah it's it was, it was a great um great feeling actually great yeah. really feeling and uh and the whole of the english squad were just so delighted yeah. oh yes exactly yeah yeah because we had we had quite a lot of people out there and and we just had a big celebration everybody together so that mm. was that was nice we had about how many do we have? We had about thirty. I think thirty or 30 so. People. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm. And uh, and of course, obviously, um, that was a great tour because we won the women's fifty plus as yes, well, we did. and also the men's sixty five plus as well. So we three gold medals. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think I don't think we'd won any previously, actually. I I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Think we'd, had, yeah. we'd obviously we had individual board medals. Goal yeah. but not um not team ones so I, think that's right. I think we had a bit of momentum behind the, the 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 teams like even before the event to get everybody together and then at the event it just seemed so nice that we we had you know teams that were they're up there in in every event and i think that just kind of helped us bring it all home yeah. yeah yeah we we had it was obviously i mean obviously a very good team sort of um uh Team spirit. It was. Yeah. There was a very good team spirit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and we're all kind yeah. of rooting for each other. Yeah. And um, I mean, as cap, obviously, kind of as captain, it's sort of we have obviously have extra to do. And it, I, yeah. I mean, for some reason at the world, I felt it was quite intense. Like the decisions yeah. you have to make every every game about who's going to play, and it's never really an easy decision. Yeah. Well, apart from maybe um, put Mickey on board, whatever. It is. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fairly easy decision. Um, and also, Nigel played, I think, for ne- most games as well. Mm. Maybe nearly, I think he might have played eight games as well. But somehow, kind of like, um, yeah, it was just deciding on sort of like the best lineup for each game. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, you know, it's, when you have to drop one player each day, you're going to get funny color sequences and all this. Yeah, kind of and kind of what I've, what I've decided. Of account, I know yeah. t- taking colors into consideration is never easy. And what I kind of decided is, after a while of these events, is that you can kind of overthink it with colors, yeah. and you just have to accept that someone's not going <laughs> to. Someone's. Yeah. But I think in this case, back. wasn't it you? You ended up taking a whole load That's, of black. I, I took the easy option as far as <laughs> team spirit was concerned. And, and, decided to take it yourself back. yeah <laughs> that's kind of like yeah it's much harder to actually give everyone else lots yeah. of tracks but um yeah somehow also that's just the role i felt comfortable in that role like when we played the top teams yeah i felt comfortable in the role of, of sort of being the black blocker mm. you know sort of like uh whereas like um you know 
Something yeah, like I mean, some or... people, there's, their, their game style much better. Exactly, yeah. Well, Nigel, we've yeah. just been doing really well with White, basically. Yeah. So um, I was quite happy to just be in, be in that role. Cool. Um, so the game you're going to show then, um, you were playing black. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So this, uh, this. Um, let me just go to the actual Lee Chess. Uh, so this, well, this game, of course, is actually from the um, from the next tournament, which was was the European Senior Team Championship. Yes. Which we. Oh, also did you take? Won. Did you? How? What was your white black split in that one? Did you? Again, it was. I think it was. <laughs> was it similar. You used your similar, practice yeah. and black think from was, the world. I, think I played. I played. Um, I played eight games in the yeah. uh, Europeans, and it was five blacks and three whites. Well, that's not so bad. Not so <laughs> bad. I think in the world, I only played six games, and I started with four blacks and then ended up with two whites to just reclaim okay. a little bit of... Fair enough. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so this game, I think I was bored three on this game. Yeah. And um, so our, uh, in the in the Europeans, our team was um, uh, Mark Hebden, yeah. um, Keith Arkell, Glenn yeah. Flair, Chris yeah. Baker, and myself, basically. Yeah. Um, so with the, I think we we're I think there's another some, very good team. Yeah. Yes. It is, you know, yeah. We were we were actually in this one. We were the top seeds as well um, by a, a small amount. I think that and the team mm. that was our nearest rival were. Um, were Berlin, right. who we played in round four. Yeah. And um, but because now, you I mean, played us in the last round, you played, um, we played England, England too, England. which was quite nice having an all yeah. England encounter on, on the board in the final board. round. That's not happened before either, has it? Yeah, I bet. Yeah. And um, so Berlin, uh, yeah, they were the second seeds, and the, the other sort of strong teams were Germany and Slovakia. And um, I mean, the thing about it, obviously Berlin, there were, there were quite a few German teams and rather sort of than saying German one, German <coughs> one, German two, Germany yeah. three, they would actually often call the teams by sort of where mo the majority of the players were from or sort of clubs more than there's anything. Um, but yeah, but Berlin were, all, for, for all intents and purposes, Berlin were like Germany one, they're the top German team. Yeah. And um, I think I was playing, I think it was an IM on board three, Marco right. Thinius. And uh, yeah, okay. Should we just check <coughs> let's dive in? Yeah. Right. So um, okay. So he played um, knight f3. I went c5. He went c4. So it's like a symmetrical English with a uh, kingside fianchetto. He, I played this move d6, and he castled. And um, normally in this sort of setup, I like playing e6 and knight e7. Yeah. Um, and, but I had quite a lot of games on the database, so I thought I'd just try something a bit different this game. I'd noticed this move, rook b8, okay. um, where black just goes for an early a6 and b5 before white, right. before, well, before doing anything else, yeah? I'm going to okay. say Larson style, but I could be wrong. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is a typical plan for both sides, actually, in this position. Yeah. Uh, but normally it's kind of white who kind of does it early rather than black. Black more mm. sort of reacts. Um, so... He played. He played the move a three, and I played a six. Um, and now he played an interesting move. I mean, you'd expect typically white to play the move rook b one here to yeah. go b four, and my plan was to go bishop f five to attack it, and if d three. The point is now is that white can't go b four without protecting the knight on c three first. So it's black who gets it in first, basically. Yeah. And the, and the game goes on, but what he did. He actually played, he just sacrificed a pawn. He played b4 straight away. Uh, kind of like a win. Presumably yeah. deliberate. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, and this kind of idea is known. Mm. And, uh, you know, obviously, if I don't take it, he gets in b4 without having to play rook b1. So, I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, you got to uh, take it. That's the uh, principal move is to take the pawn. Yes, of course. So I took it and he went d4. Now I think he's threatening queen a4 check, knight c6, d5. So I need to retreat. And um, and now he went bishop f4. And uh, so okay, okay. So white, so white's white's given up a pawn, but he has got still got extra central pawns. And so just like the typical sort of wing gambit you might do in a sort of like, well, obviously the Sicilian wing gambit or like the mm. bingo gambit, there's this sort of compensation, sort of long-term compensation for white. Um, so I had a, a real long think here because clearly he can't play D5 yet at the moment without allowing the knight to be captured. Yeah. 
Yeah. But I, I need to develop. Yeah. And, and if you be a knight on f6, you're kind of blocking that off. Yeah, then he'll go d5. And I, I didn't want to move my knight back to a7. Yeah. He'll, he'll get a strong initiative. He'll bring his knight to d4. Yeah, so yeah. I was looking at moves like bishop g4 here. or And I, I just right. didn't want to play a move like e5. Because, you know, the good, yeah. of, the, good, the good news for black is that I do have this rock-solid pawn formation. Yeah, and as soon as I make a move like e5, you know, bishop g5 or something, he's gonna he's getting definite counterplay or compensation yeah. now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I didn't want to do that, and um, I, I think initially I was going to go bishop g4, but then I started looking at knight f6, and I realised it was playable. Okay. And um, because after knight f6, and there's the move I want to play. Of course, I want a castle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, after d5, I have to move knight h5, and that's indeed what happened. Um, ah, nice. So if he takes on c6. Okay, yeah, right. you take on c3. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Yeah. Clearly, it's very complicated, so I had to spend quite a bit of time on this position because, I mean, my bishop on c3 is an unprotected piece just at the start, mm. so tactical weakness. Also, he's got possibilities of c takes b7, various possibilities. And there's, there's one nice line I just wanted to um, show here. Is that, mm. um, if he takes, I mean, originally, what I want to do really is to take the bishop on f4, then take the knight on c3. Yeah. Um, clearly, I can take the knight on c3, and that is actually the best move. And after he moves his rook, let's say to b1, uh, now I can take and then just castle, perhaps. Yeah. And yeah. I've, I've kind of worked this out as being okay for black. I mean, okay, the pawn on b7 is pinned, but I'm a pawn up. Um, I can always play b6 or b5 if I need to. Um, I've got bishop f5 come with tempo. And if he, I don't think he's got anything that useful to attack my bishop, I can just retreat it. However, um, I was con slightly concerned about what might happen if he just plays the move um, bishop h6 and just gives up the exchange. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that could be quite um, dangerous. This, yeah. is, this is fine for black. For example, I can just castle here, but I was still slightly concerned about that. So, when in my original you thoughts, can't I, castle. you're right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was wondering actually. I was wondering if there's a reason. That's very why, illegal, John. Yeah, I was wondering why there's a reason why why I might play bishop h6. I think I've stumbled across it. <laughs> okay, let me. Yeah, so actually, probably what I could just take the pawn. Yeah, and if I really need to, I can play the move bishop g7. Yes, yes, it's defended by the knight. I think that's okay. Yeah. Um. However, uh, my initial intention he didn't play d takes six my original intention was to take this first yeah the point being he takes back and i take on c3 and i'm happy yeah. Yeah. but then i suddenly realized that white's got this great idea here and that's this move knight d4 Ooh, blocking Stop, stopping bishop takes c3 yeah he's now threatening just to be a piece up with pawn takes knight yeah. If so I take, take on G2, but, take on G2 but now he plays yeah. this great move knight D5. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And now there's a huge threat of C7. Ooh. So it's like a, another. I just um, had Steve Dishman doing a couple of intermediate moves, but here's yeah. another intermediate move. Basically, yeah. just ignore all the captures that Blackstone, just stick your knights wow. in the center. Yeah. And if, if, and if I stop C7 by taking, then, my, my, then I, he has. Um, a fork. Yeah. This move, yeah. And this is just winning, basically, for White, because he's going to take oh, on well, B8. Well, it's a good job you didn't go down this. <laughs> no. Well, I, well, of course, I. by the time I was thinking about this while he was considering his move, and in the end, he yeah. decided not to take on C6. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, but of course, if he had taken, I'd have had to have taken on C3 instead of F4. Yes. And, and that's it. Black's okay, actually. Still okay, yeah. So he went Bishop D2. I went knight e5, and then he went takes, and I went takes. And around about here, I was, I was feeling fairly happy now, because I kind of solved the problem mm. in my king's side. And I thought, if I can get castled and then bring my knight into the game, for example, knight f, you know, knight, if I can get this knight back to, uh, let me get this right with the arrows, knight f6 here, yeah. this, then black's going to be just better, basically, born up. Born up and yeah. Rid of, yeah, with a good position. However, when he went queen b3, I suddenly started thinking, actually, this is not going to be so easy, because... Rook takes a6 is actually a threat here. Oh, so it is, yes. I mean, a threat to win the pawn back. I mean, it's not a huge threat, but if he wins the mm. pawn back, he's going to be okay. And I spent a long, too much time now about just actually giving the pawn back. I was thinking about knight f6, and then he yeah. takes, and then knight, and then takes, takes here. Yeah. I thought the idea is I give the pawn back, and then 
have a slight, you know, if I can get the queens off and get my A pawn going, that's a bit better. Mm. But it was, I couldn't, this sort of position here, I couldn't work out how to unravel. It's, I felt actually, you know, I yeah, can't, that you know. Bishop on C8 is a bit. Yeah, and if I, I want to bring my king to the queen side, but if I go king D8, it's got bishop A5 check, so. Right. Uh, so, yeah, I just spent too long on that. I thought, well, in the end, I thought, why am I just giving up a pawn? Let's just move my bishop. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. So I did do I went bishop D7. I think queen C7 is a slightly better move, actually. But okay. the problem with bishop D7 is it blocks my knight's route to F6 to D7, right. which is ideally yeah. where it wants to go. Yeah. Um, but anyway, he, he played the move um, bishop E3. Oh, no, sorry. He went rook FC1 first. I think bishop E3 might be slightly more accurate, but it's understandable why he wanted to defend the knight first. Hmm. Like castle now went here and so <clears throat> yeah clearly i'm still a pawn up and um but of course if white has another move the white will either go bishop a7 to attack my rook or even bishop b6 to force the queen to move first yeah and then bishop yeah. a7 there's lots of pressure on my queen side yeah he maybe take on b7 right now yes he takes on b7 then yeah he's, white could easily be better um so i had to um I don't really see anything else that I could do now apart from what I was intending, and that was to move B5. Mm. It gets quite complicated here because obviously if he takes on B5, I can take back with a pawn, and I'm probably a bit better as long as, long as I get my knight back to F6. Um, but he went rook takes A6. Okay. okay. So he's yeah. got his pawn back, but you oh, might... Pawn back. Yeah. Yeah, and now, um, I mean, I can play B takes C4, and that's just roughly equal. Queen takes C4, Rook C8, he can move his queen back to defend his knight. Um, I can move my knight from H5 back into the game, and it's roughly equal. However, the move I intended to play, and the move I, I did play, was this move Queen C8, with a double attack on his rook and not a pawn on C4. Nice. Yeah, and um, there's no way for him to save his rook and the pawn. Um and around about here, this is where I think he lost his chance. I mean, he played a couple of moves and then I got a, a big advantage, basically. But um, the move I was most afraid of here was actually just rook c6. Okay. Yeah. Giving up the exchange. Giving up the exchange, yeah. But giving him a pawn on c6. A that pawn on c6. Looks, but also, yeah, because yeah, he's going to go c7, isn't he? Also opening up that bishop, which is kind of yeah. out of the game with a pawn on d5. Yeah. And I was I was quite nervous about this position. I felt like I should be maybe a bit better, but I, I realised it's just very complicated and, and mm. a mistake and sort of like, um, well, I wasn't, I, I couldn't say for any certainty whether I was even better here, actually. Could You know, yeah. I felt like I should be okay, at least okay and, and perhaps better, but I yeah. was certainly it was a more tricky position to consider. I mean, for example, I was thinking about just, going bishop takes c3 and when the idea is after queen takes to going b4 to give him a pass pawn to think about yeah and also to block the c file yeah but around about here i even got after in this position here after bishop takes c3 i was even thinking about what happens if he just takes this pawn and these are Ooh, look at those two points yeah, exactly <laughs> yeah and I, I i to be honest i never really got this far because he he didn't play rook take rook c6 and of course, maybe I, you could like blockade it with bishop a yeah that's mm -hmm. what i that's what i realized afterwards and when i checked as well with the end yeah I, i've actually got this move bishop c5 bishop a5 he goes b6 so i can't blockade but i can give up my bishop okay and then go queen here gosh yeah so it's a bit scary. <laughs> it is, yeah. C7 and then rook takes. Right. And, um, yeah, and black's fine. Black's winning, basically. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but a rook C6 is certainly the move um, I think he should have played. Uh, you know, you know, he played the move rook A7 instead. And I played, uh, I just took the pawn. He went queen C2. Yeah. And finally, I got my knight back in the game. So I was feeling a lot happier now. Oh yeah, especially yeah. because of um, I've got this idea of knight g four. Right. If I can chase the bishop away from that long diagonal, yeah, then I've got moves like queen c five as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. However, around about this time, I was still there's a move that I was thinking he might do, which I thought was the most concerning. He didn't do it. He played knight e four. But the move I was most concerned about was knight a four. Okay. But the he's got this idea of knight b six, right. basically, and. Oh, yeah. um, my 
original intention. I can't remember what the time was like here. I don't think. I think we moved twenty, so I don't think I had a huge amount of time, but I wasn't like in desperate time trouble. Maybe about twenty minutes mm. moves plus a plus a thirty second increment. And I think he had something similar. Um, but originally, my in my original intention here was to actually take on a four. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Queen takes a four. Yeah. And then knight g four, and I kind of worked okay. out that okay, if he takes on. Um, Rook takes C for. I've just got Rook C Rook here. Okay. And actually, winning. So he's got to. Wow. He's got to go Bishop F one. Oh, and then you've got Knight E three intermediate knight as well. Knight. You've got to. Yeah, all and now it. it's not just a cow. Obviously, I'd be clearly better here, even if I yeah. just had to move my queen. But I've actually got Queen H three, <laughs> which is actually winning immediately. Okay, because they have to go Rook F four, and you take it. Yeah. 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 So. Um, so. And it, uh, yeah, so also if he goes queen takes c4, yeah, queen takes c4 is a bit better actually, but I can go. Um, just take it off. Just take it off and then. And take on e3, maybe. Take on e3. And I just I just thought that this was a got, it's clearly better for black basically. Yeah. Pawn yeah. structure is very yeah. poor. So I can start with a move like rook b2 or, or rook e8 to defend my pawn. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it might be better for black than even this, but I was I was satisfied. That You're happy that. enough, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. So, um, but I completely missed something, which was in this Ooh. position here after knight g4. I completely missed it. You have this move, bishop h3. Ooh. Which, yeah. Attacking, Ooh, yeah, and that's nasty. Actually, it's not enough to give white an advantage, um, but certainly it would have been enough to shock me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In this position, yeah. I mean, okay. Um, well, do you end up going f five or something? Uh, I can, yeah. I think f five is not really what I want to play, is it? Really? Yeah. No. I mean, but yeah. I think like h five, perhaps. H five, yeah. And if if he, yeah, I suppose, yeah, the, yeah. So basically, this is not the best. But I mean, he can go f three, can't he? Yeah. I don't know whether how. This is actually quite an interesting queen sack. You only got two pieces for it. Two pieces and a c pawn. And a huge C and the dark one. squares. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Quite interesting, but certainly not my intention. <laughs> um, um, so yeah, after knight a four, move the move that I also considered. I'd hope that I would have eventually got around to playing. Hopefully, I'd have seen bishop h three. The move is knight here immediately. Right. Knight b six. Um, knight takes e three. Um, knight takes c eight. Knight takes c2, knight takes e7, check king g7, and then rook takes d7. And I'd had a look at this position and I was kind of umming and ahhing about it. Mm. And then I that's before I started looking at bishop takes a4 and thinking that looks quite good, but obviously I missed bishop h3. Um, this position is actually very good for black as, as long as black finds this move, knight a3, defending the pawn. Okay. And yeah. now this is just a great end game for black because that pawn's strong. And also this bishop on g2 is completely out so of the game. It's blocked by its own pawn, yeah. Yeah. And also I think it's important that in this position here, yeah. we have the move. It might not be vitally important, but bishop, no, bishop, bishop b2. Okay. And then the pawn's got a clear yeah. path to queen. Yeah. It might even be irrelevant. I mean, yeah, this is just horrible for white now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, whether I'd seen that, I don't know. <laughs> it's quite a long way through. I might have played knight eight. I might have played bishop takes a four. But I'd hope I'd have a bit of a think about it. Yeah. But he, yeah, he he played the he for some reason he he didn't like knight a four and he played the move knight e four. Um, might be a bit harsh to give a question mark, but it kind of just made things so easy for me because I just swapped mm. and then went c three, and now the position's kind of crystallised and there's not. A great deal happening apart from the fact that i've got a massive pawn on c3 yeah 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 you're gonna um, bring your rook in i guess at some point. yeah so the rest of the game yeah this yeah the rest of the game is fairly straightforward basically mm. um he went queen d3 i went bishop b5 he went queen back to d1 he wants to go this move bishop d4 this is the only right. chance to swap off the bishops and sort of round up that c pawn um, but I saw in advance that I had a sort of nice trick. So I got rid of that rook on the seventh rank with rook b7. He took, took, and he fell for it. I don't, to be honest, I don't think white's got anything anyway here. I think no. basically I'm threatening just rook c8 or rook a8. And so he played the move bishop d4, but that allowed me to take take on e2. Oh, yeah. 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 Queen takes. 
bishop takes now you know there's no way yeah. he's going to win the c pawn i've got um and i've just com black's just completely dominating so um i think yeah i mean i think i had about we both had about five minutes left so no real major time trouble mm. and um i just got my rook into the game and the queen into the game um yeah, he, I mean, the queen, he, obviously it's opposite colour bishops, but the queen exchange is going to help him because I'm going to put a rook on b2 and he's just going to be, he's just going to be a bit too stretched. Mm. Yeah, that, you know, I can probably, well, I'll show you just at, towards the end, the queen's to get exchanged. Um, yeah, if I, or now, you know, I'm hitting the pawn, so um, he played the move queen e4 and I swapped queens and went f5, bishop yeah. d3 and bishop d4. And yeah, so just an example how black could win this sort of f4, uh, king f6, king f3, and then I can just play, well, e6 or e5, doesn't matter which, basically. Let's say e5, I'm threatening e4, so he's got to take on passant. I take with the king, and then what I can do is I can just wait for his king. Um, he, you know, he can't, he doesn't want to take on b2 because my pawn's even further away then, yeah? Yeah. And yeah. if he goes king d1, this is the time I can actually just swap and then just come after these pawns. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I just, yeah, I think I win, all, I win all three yeah. pawns, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. If he, he went f3 instead and I went king f6, threatened to bring my king to e5. Um, so if he goes f4, we have a very similar position. To, um, if he goes here, I think I just bring my king in here. Yeah. And okay, you can take, take, and well, I'm just going to take the pawn on d5. Take all the pawns you want to. Yeah, yeah, you can go king here, but I just actually just go there then. Forces yeah. king and then take. And that's just an easy win for black now. Even if, right. even if, even if being an opposite color bishop ending, black's just got too many pawns. Yeah. Well, very nice. That was it. Yeah. yeah. And Fantastic. um, very good game. <laughs> This was obviously pleasing because we drew all the other three games in the match. So it, right, so um, that yeah. secured the the team win as well. It did yes, exactly. I can't yeah. remember if it's the last game to finish. I'm not sure. I think there was maybe, yeah. um, but certainly yeah. So we uh, we beat Berlin, and then um, I think we beat Berlin. Then the next round we beat Slovakia, who are the next sort of like yeah. um, rivals. Oh yeah, it's absolutely crucial that then. For so the we whole, yeah, so we had about. We yeah. had about three rounds in a row where we beat we beat the top teams, and that sort of broke the back of the tournament, really, basically. Yes, because I remember you were kind of cruising by the end. It was well, I mean, not obviously not. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, England too was tough opposition. For yes. Well, actually, <laughs> funny enough, actually, um, we won our first seven matches. Then we played a team in the penultimate match, who turned out to be our toughest match, and we we only drew the match to all. Mm. I can't remember the name of the team actually. Um, but yeah, they were a really tough team. But the, luckily, well, not luckily, we were still well to head. And uh, Slovakia beat Germany, which meant we'd won it with a round to spare. Yes. So by the time we had the All England clash, it was. Yeah, all, but I bet you were all, still nervous because you, you didn't want anything bad to happen in the All England clash. No. <laughs> There's still quite a lot to play for, wasn't there? But, I mean, but the other thing I seem to remember is England got through the whole tournament without losing a single game. Without losing a single individual game, that's true. Without yeah, a single individual game. So that was yeah. um, a pretty. And I think to be honest, that that made us. That's that's the kind of thing that made us nervous, basically. Because yeah, 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 yeah. You start agreeing too many draws just to avoid that, basically. <laughs> avoid but, losing yeah. a game, yeah. Yeah, but we did. Um, yeah, we got through without losing a single game, basically. So we had eight wins and one eight. Sorry, eight match <laughs> wins and one yeah. match draw, basically. Yeah. Um, this is the European. This is the European. European yeah. yeah. Um, All right. Thank you, John. A huge congratulations. It's been an absolutely fantastic year for England seniors, and uh, and you were a major, major part of it, captaining the over fifty teams in the worlds and the Europeans. Um, great individual results and great team results. So thanks very much for coming um, on video to talk about it. Thank you. And see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.